Hello, well last night we had an opportunity in Christchurch to unveil the recovery plan for the Christchurch CBD and I can tell you there was huge excitement amongst the crowd there that gathered to see what the future of their city might look like. You've probably had a chance now to sort of get a glimpse of that, but essentially the way to think about it is that the CBD in land area is about half the size of the old central business district. It has around it this green belt called a frame, and people who are likely to live in apartments in those frames, they'll be doing all sorts of things, but it'll be a very green, leafy sort of feel in there to sort of embody the spirit of Christchurch, which is very much the garden city. At one end of the frame, you'll have the Avon River of great significance, both to Naitahu and to the wider community in Christchurch, flowing through uh, the top end of that frame and uh, ultimately giving you a CBD, which is green, modern, uh, compact, uh, but actually containing all the things that you might want in a very livable 21st century city. So then you have about 12 precincts that uh, divide up areas of specialisation or interest and they include everything from a convention centre right through to a stadium, a medical precinct for instance, a performing arts precinct. And so what will happen in those precincts is that you'll have development, some of them led by the government in the case of something like a health precinct, where the private sector may well get involved with specialists and universities uh, engaging and taking space. Uh, but what you'll find is that you'll have a place where people can work, play, enjoy themselves, take their families out, socialise, have a great time, go off to a game or a concert, whatever it might be, but also have a magnificent place to live. So as I said uh, last night, there was real excitement uh, from the crowd because for two years, people of Christchurch have really had to suffer under these very debilitating earthquakes and the huge impact that's had on their lives. And um, I think at that point they could see that there was a real future for themselves and for their kids. I think as a result of this, you will see the population of Christchurch growing as people go to Christchurch to live and enjoy what will arguably be the most livable city in New Zealand. So it's been a tough time for people of Canterbury, uh, but it's very much going to have a brighter future at the end of it as we get through uh, the rebuild of Christchurch. From the government's point of view, we're stepping up, we'll be buying the land that forms uh, those frames. Uh, over time we may sell some of that back to interested parties as they go about the development. Uh, then there'll be negotiations on the developments of the various precincts and some will be the government's responsibility in totality. Some may have no government involvement and some may have partial government involvement. At this stage, early indications from the council are that they'll invest around about $800 million, uh, but the Earthquake Recovery Minister, Jerry Brownlee, is certainly having discussions with them to see whether they can put more cash in and how that um, might be resolved. So an exciting night and a great future and very positive feedback. The online polls I've seen have shown broadly about 80% support for the plan, uh, and that's very, very good indeed. Uh, should, uh, I guess, make mention of a few people that are still struggling with the issues down there in Christchurch, particularly if they're in what's called TC3 land, so technical category 3. The complications in Christchurch are many and varied, but um, one way to think about it is there's now been well over 600,000 claims, so there's about 191,000 households. Sometimes you'll have three, four, five claims from a particular household, triggered at different events because obviously there's been different earthquakes causing damage at different times. Uh, those insurance companies that people are dealing with have different reinsurers at different times in the process. You've also got a situation where EQC covers the first $100,000 worth of damage to built property and $20,000 to chattels. So again, if you're close to about $100,000 worth of damage, then there's um, quite a lot of debate about whether that demarcation has been hit and whether the private sector insurance companies should be involved. So it's a very complex issue. Uh, we are doing everything we can to speed that up. We're working very closely with the insurance sector and with others and we are working constructively to try and resolve the issues for the people of Christchurch, but it's not straightforward, it's not easy. Um, I feel for them because they're real frustration on their part, um, but we do need to try and work our way through that process as fast as we practically can. <coughs> so that's the situation there. I'm off in a few moments to Samoa uh, for the celebration of 50 years of diplomatic relations between New Zealand and Samoa. I'll be taking up with me a gift from the people of New Zealand to the people of Samoa and that essentially is going to be a gift that will see us pay for the fees uh, for children of Samoa to go to a high school in years 9, 10 and 11, so third, fourth and fifth form if you're of that vintage. Um, that's about a five million dollar gift so it will see free education for those kids over about the next three to four years at which point we hope that the Samoan government will be able to pick up that liability 
uh, and have a program for youngsters going into education. We already put a lot of cash into primary school education in Samoa and this is another important step. So taking with me a delegation of uh, members of Parliament right across the Parliament. This isn't a political issue, it's really a moment of celebration for our whole Parliament and indeed for the people of New Zealand. As you're probably aware, Samoan population in New Zealand is very significant at over 130,000 people of Samoan ethnicity now living in New Zealand. Uh, so that's what we're up to, up to for the next couple of days and uh, looking forward to that trip to Samoa. It's going to be a great opportunity to go back to the Potasi village where I was uh, given uh, that great title of being a matai or a chief uh, of the Potasi village. And if you want to use uh, my full title there, I'm Toa Savali uh, John Key. And uh, that was uh, a lovely gift from those people of Potasi as we uh, tried to help them out through the very devastating tsunami which took place back in, I think, 2009. Uh, so, Talo Falava and uh, Mike reporting from Samoa. Otherwise, uh, we'll have an opportunity to chat next week.